Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. So I am now working on the tail section and controls. I've run a uh, piece of Bowden tubing uh, through the boom. Um, now the Bowden tubing is extremely flexible. You, you can't just run it through uh, alone. So uh, slide a carbon fiber rod through the Bowden tubing and then go ahead and insert it and just guide it through the bulkheads uh, as you move down the fuselage. Um, I just uh, in advance cut the Bowden tubing so it would uh, you know, have extra length at each end that I will then trim off later when I position servos and such. Likewise with the carbon fiber rod, I left it at its full length. Uh, so now I'm uh, doing some other little uh, things that need to be taken care of. I'm, I'm using these uh, little micro clevises. Uh, they're extremely precise. Uh, they have these little uh, brass pins that snap through them. And uh, the only problem is, is that the uh, holes provided here at the end of the horns are too large. They're too small for off the shelf uh, nylon clevises, um, but they're, uh, they're too big for these. So I'm gonna be uh, shaping the edge of this uh, later, but I've drilled uh, new holes uh, using a, uh, a 1.1 millimeter uh, micro bit. And uh, so that allows um, free movement of the pin without uh, excess slack. Um, so now I'm deciding how many of these pieces I'm going to use between the stabilizer uh, and the uh, fuselage. And it seems that, um, and I've already shaped one as you can see, so it fits around the fuselage. And the way I did that was I just wrapped some uh, uh, some sandpaper around an X-Acto knife handle that seemed the right size uh, with the thickness of the uh, sandpaper. Um, so now uh, I've decided that one, the shaped piece by itself is going to be enough lift because I don't want to have to deflect uh, this control rod unnecessarily. And if I do uh, two of these, if I add a second one on top, um, that means I've got to deflect the, uh, the push rod about like this far to reach the horn. Because uh, as you can see, I've already, you know, assembled uh, some stuff here. Uh, the plywood, we're going to have one on top and then we're going to have one that is on top of the stack or however many of them we use, be it one or, or two or, or um, however many you, you go with. Um, When it comes to push rods, I always prefer to keep things as straight a line as possible. So the less deviation, the better, because once we start deviating, then we're getting an angle into things, which means that you're potentially gonna get more up than down on, on a, out of a stroke or vice versa. So um, basically what I did was I assembled this up with a single piece and then I did it with two and you know, guesstimated with the horn, you know, passing, uh, passing through the, the wood, all, you know, to get a good contact, how far down the horn was going to reach. And as you can see, I'll just kind of demo this out. If, if this is our flat surface, in other words, this is the beginning of the stabilizer plus, uh, that thin sheet of plywood on top of it between the elevator, um, that puts us right there. So there will be a little bit of deviation uh, on the push rod, but it's not gonna be more than a, a millimeter offline. So that seems like the best way to go um, using just the, uh, the, the single block. And I've already made my little cutouts basically by um, I stacked a few of these up and I used the holes that are in the fuselage and basically I, sorry, I have this plastic here because I was uh, trying to decide how I was going to glue things together um, and I wanted to protect this surface here from glue, um, but it doesn't look like that's going to be an issue in any event. So 
with the, that on that, like that, and then, let me move the camera a little bit. So then I inserted it into the fuselage, like that, and I pressed down until the uh, nuts had squeezed themselves into that soft balsa wood. Um, so now it's going to be easy to glue them in place and cap that off uh, with uh, one of the two pieces of plywood. So in other words, the nuts are going to be um, are going to be in this wood here with a cap of plywood, uh, gluing them and holding them in place. Now that has to be done very carefully so as not to uh, not to get any glue on the threads. Otherwise, that's going to be a a problem. So um, I'm going to continue and uh, video as much of this process as I can. It is difficult because you know I have to. Uh, I want to have the camera be close enough that you can actually see something and then at the same time I've got uh, parts you know moving around at odd angles and uh, whacking the camera with the stabilizer and such so now basically what I want to do is I want to glue this onto here with the nuts in between. Like that. So. Um. So I'm going to think about exactly how I'm going to go about this, um, but um, anyway, it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I've got uh, these screws through here like this, okay, and I'm going to put, I'm going to use very small amounts of glue because I don't want it to squeeze through onto the threads but I need to get a little bit into these areas where the nuts are going to go and I've got the screws in there just to protect from this thing getting into the uh, into the threads so there's a possibility I could be gluing this whole thing together here, but it's the only way I can see to get this out. One option might have been to have put some type of lubricant on the threads, but I'm just going to be very sparing with the glue. It's not going to take much. So now I'm just going to ins. No, oh, that's not going to work. Hmm. Okay. That just looked like a recipe for getting glue on the threads there. I think I got enough time to do this before the glue sets up.
and now I can hold this against the fuselage. I can always follow this up with a little bit of CA at the edges just to make sure, but this seems like the best way to make sure that I've got this clamp down on here. And now I have to patiently hold it. So I have uh, glued the tube in. I gave it a little bit of an angle upwards and uh, kept it as close to the fuselage as possible. So if I uh, extend the carbon fiber rod through it, you can see that uh, that's gonna work out just fine. And I'm actually gonna trim this back a little bit. I left myself some extra just to make sure that uh, uh, no glue would get in the end. Um, since I've got you know extra tube, I figured uh, better safe than sorry. And so now I'm gonna go ahead uh, slide the carbon fiber rod back through and I'm going to trim it to about there. And now I can, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue a clevis on. Now, normally I like to have the ability to adjust the clevises, but because I'm trying to save weight, um, I'm only going to use one of these and I'm going to use it uh, inside the fuselage uh, where the servo is and uh, so I'll be able to adjust it from there and as you can see these are quite small it uh, actually fits uh, nice and snug on the uh, push rod so um, that will get epoxied in at the other end but out here I am just going to epoxy one of these on. Now, the hole here is bigger. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of uh, um, Bowden tubing. And I'll just use that little piece of scrap that I just cut. And I'm basically gonna cut a couple of little rings, maybe a millimeter each, uh, at least two of them. And then I will glue them with CA onto the end here separated by about a millimeter of space so uh, they can hold some glue in between. Uh, then I'll put some five minute epoxy on them. I'll try to get a little five minute epoxy in the end here and then I will slide them on because as you can see right now this is way too loose. Um, even the Bowden tubing itself isn't, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of room still. So that'll work um, as a spacer as it were and uh, the five minute epoxy will fill in the rest. This thing is already threaded, so it's gonna, um, I think it's threaded, may not be. In any event, it's, it'll grip just fine. I've used these before, and uh, basically I'll just uh, glue it on until the Bowden tube is right to the end of the, uh, of the tube there, um, and that will be set and ready to go. There'll be nothing else to do at this end for the stabilizer and I am going to go ahead and use another carbon fiber rod and the tubing uh, for the rudder back here I just need to well I actually I don't even need to clean that little bit of fiber that'll actually uh, hold some glue so that's fine um, and uh, again plenty of space so I'll, I'll just make the tube come out to about here just like I did on this one um, I used five minute and uh, I whipped it I, I mixed it really, really well, um, probably for at least a, a solid minute. And the more you stir it and uh, get little air bubbles into it, it kind of makes it stiffer and harder when it's dry. Uh, it doesn't have that kind of, um, uh, you know, soft gummy feeling that five minute epoxy can sometimes have. It's almost like adding in a filler. And uh, it also doesn't, um, doesn't run as easy because by the time you're done, it's starting to set up a little bit. So I didn't have to worry about it dripping in. And basically when I uh, inserted the Bowden tube, um, 
I, when I was ready to put the glue on, I pulled it out about a quarter inch and put a little bit of glue on the top of the tube and then slid it down under the edge so some glue would be on uh, the inside of the carbon fiber uh, boom here and attached to the tube and then, uh, you know, kind of filled it up here to make a nice joint and keep it solid. And uh, so that's how I did that process there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue on a clevis and just have that ready. And then I will uh, do the tubing over here for the rudder. And um, I'll show you or at least tell you about things along the way as I go through that process. But, um, you know, as you can see, this is our uh, slot. And it's on the, excuse me. Um, if I were to position the stabilizer, I'm sorry, I'm jiggling the camera, uh, over the hole there, and then this is gonna be here. As you can see, it's pointing right at it. So, you know, it may have a little bit of a, a bend to it, but it is carbon fiber, it is flexible. Uh, so that's gonna work just fine. And, uh, by only using uh, one of these wood blocks. Um, I'm not gonna have to worry about this being up at too much of an angle. It's, it may have, a, again, a little bit of a deviation from its standard line, but otherwise it'll, it'll be right there. Um, I've got this glued and uh, the, uh, the uh, nylon nuts are inside there. So all I'll need to do is uh, trim these pieces and I can start covering the tail section as soon as I get these uh, cables done or the push rods done and the hoses glued in. Okay, I just thought I would show you how this looks uh, with a couple little uh, rings of that uh, tubing on there. I don't know how well that's going to uh, show. It's going to be clear, but um, the idea is that there will be space in between those and those are CA'd in place so they're nice and solid on this um, so that uh, the glue is going to get in this the uh, five minute epoxy will fill that area and it acts like an anchor I also went ahead and uh, just to help things God, I'm sorry about that uh, just to help things grip better uh, in general I went ahead and used uh, one of these, I threaded it in and then uh, unscrewed it uh, to cut some threads into the plastic inside this uh, clevis' uh, end tubing. And that is going to also provide uh, something for the glue to have purchase. Uh, so once this is in here and uh, with some five minute epoxy, that will be a permanent resident. I won't have to worry about it coming out. Um, I'm also uh, going to start doing some covering today. I'm going to um, start covering the outer and inner wing sections and uh, working on those since those are finished. And, um, and then I'll start doing these tail feathers. Uh, the plane is definitely approaching completion. So uh, this is exciting. Soon it's going to be doing uh, maiden flights and I'll definitely uh, have footage of that for you. So as you can see, our clevis is now attached to our carbon fiber rod. Uh, it's, I love using these thin carbon fiber rods and, and the uh, tubing. It's an extremely light solution. Um, it's very reliable. It gives you adjustability that you don't get from pull cords. Uh, it gives you everything that you get from a larger, um, much heavier uh, push rod solution but uh, at a low cost and at a low weight. And the weight is particularly important. And all of these items that I'm using uh, can be gotten from hyperflight.co.uk. Same place I bought the kit.
thought I'd show you a little uh, trick on uh, doing tape hinges. You need to open the bag. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you're trying to get a small amount of space in between the two surfaces because ideally you want to be able to back the tape on the other side and have the two pieces of tape touch just a little bit. So you want to have a small amount of space. So um, I'm going to do half and then half. And to create that space that I'm looking for, I've used the thinner of the two types of pins that I have. I've got one at the center and one at either end. And then I've got it pinned from around to keep them as close together as possible. So this allows me to have that consistent amount of spacing all the way across the surface. So now I just need to lay two pieces of tape down like this. Then I can fold them over and lay more tape on the opposite side and have them the tape just touch. Now, you don't need to do the whole opposite side. Um, you can just do small strips because the top portion is providing the main structure and you just want to have a little bit of contact at a few points. If you do it all the way across, you may end up with a surface that's too stiff to move. And then when you you know, try to pull the tape off to redo, uh, you may find that you're taking the covering off at the same time and having to totally restart the process, including covering the wing all, or the uh, surface all over again. So, now this is a, uh, a new tape I've never used before, and it looks like it's really clear, and that's nice. Because some tape can be kind of foggy. And ideally, you want to enjoy the covering, not the tape. You can't even see it. That's really nice tape. I think this is the tape that I got from uh, Sorry, I'm focusing here. I think this is the tape I got from Hyperflight. And that is sweet. You, you can't even see the tape. It's invisible. So now I can pull out all these pins. So there we go. So like I said, I'm just going to do, you know, a couple of strips that are maybe an inch or less. And I will demonstrate for you. I'm going to go out to the one end here. go. And in case you're curious, this is uh, clear hinge tape, half inch by 36 feet, or 12.5 millimeters by 11 meters. There's no part number on there. opposite end. Don't 
definitely want to watch getting fingerprints on the tape because it definitely holds on to them. two for each side. They're a good inch long, inch and a quarter maybe. So there we go, nice smooth hinge action, perfect. Something I like to do with tape like this is uh, fold a bit over at the end when I'm done to just make a little pull tab, makes it easier to start it up the next time you're going to need it. So that is our stabilizer complete. So as you can see the covering process is coming along quite well. Um, just a few little uh, tips and tricks for you. Um, when you are covering the wings, any of the sections, always cover the bottom first and then cover the top. When you're dealing with the carbon fiber leading edges, um, the covering doesn't like to adhere to the carbon fiber real well and there's not much surface there for it to grab onto. So what I recommend is that you first cover the bottom, trim the uh, covering right to the edge here so that it's you know can wrap onto the uh, front of the leading edge here and then don't tighten it down completely also cover one section at a time cover this flat panel and then this flat panel okay then when you're ready for the top panel cut your sheet cut it so you've got a good horizontal line here and some extra off the front rear and this end over this way um, tack it down here or excuse me, first uh, lay the wing upside down, lay your cover out sticky side down and put the leading edge right here and then anchor this down like that and then fold over the covering, trim your, uh, your edge here for this rib and then anchor it going from leading edge to the rear. That way you get a nice overlap of the covering here at the leading edge and a good bond. If you have to, you can cover and then trim that edge and then wrap it in and, cut and uh, seal it up. But um, I found that the other way worked uh, quite well. So, um, let's see, uh, I've got the, still got the rudder to do. I'm gonna do the rudder and transparent white just to break up the color scheme a little bit. And uh, the fuselage is gonna be done in black in uh, non-transparent covering because large open sections of wood covered in transparent just don't look good. Um, I'd like to show you the uh, hinge that I did on the, um, on the spoiler. And so what I did was uh, lay a strip of tape, oops, closed up on me. I laid a strip of tape from one end to the other.
I um, I pushed this as far back as I could. Now remember to make sure you sand this well and uh, sand a bit of an edge there. And I keep letting that snap close on me. It really likes it. Um, you can see through the covering the difference right there where there's a patch, a piece of tape on the opposite side and here and again over here. So that's basically all it needs is um, those, you know, the top section go, you know, one side to the other um, and that makes it want to close and then put a couple of small strips of tape on the opposite side and as you can see if you have you know mate if you've done a good job on sanding and fitting you should be able to have a little bit of tape to tape contact at your hinge points so um, they're not gonna pop up and be a problem later and I've already tested that with the servo it works great so um, now I've got one more section of wing to cover, uh, the rudder, and then it's on to final assembly and uh, radio installation. Please remember to click like and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.